Did you know that back in the day, diabetes was diagnosed with a taste test? A urine taste test, to be more specific. Yep, doctors had to taste someone's urine to detect if there was sugar in it. Actually, something like 300 years ago, there was even an English doctor called Thomas Willis, who described diabetic urine as wonderfully sweet, as if it were imbued with honey or sugar. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that accent. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Kisana Health channel, the best health information channel for people with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. My name is Sarah, I'm a pharmacist with a passion for diabetes education. My channel here on YouTube is dedicated to providing valuable information to help you live a healthier life while taking fewer pills. So I invite you to check all my other videos and subscribe to my channel to benefit from all this info and support my work. Today we're talking about the famous A1C test. Anyone who's ever been told by a doctor that they have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes has usually heard that their A1C is too high. So let's break it down. What is the A1C? Is it more valuable than blood sugar tests? What do the numbers actually mean? What levels should you target? And what do you do if your A1C is too high? We're going to answer all these questions right now. What is the A1C test? The A1C test is a simple blood test and it gives you a measure of your average blood sugar levels over the past two to three months. So when you prick your finger at home to check your blood sugar, the result you get only tells you what's happening in your blood right now at this specific point in time. It doesn't give you any information on where your blood sugar was at earlier. The A1C on the other hand gives you a better idea of what your blood sugar has been up to in the past three months. So that's why it's commonly used to diagnose diabetes or prediabetes. Or if you're someone who lives with diabetes, it's also the main test that you and your healthcare team use to monitor how well you're managing your blood sugar levels. As a quick FYI, if you ever hear the terms hemoglobin A1C, glycated hemoglobin, glycosylated hemoglobin, or HbA1c, just know that they all mean the same thing. What do the A1c numbers mean? An A1c that is less than 5.7% is considered normal. An A1c between 5.7 and 6.4% is considered in the prediabetes range. And an A1c of 6.5% or higher is considered diabetes. Since the A1c is an average, I'm also going to show you this table here, where you can see for each A1c result what average blood sugar level it represents. Feel free to pause now or screenshot so you can have a closer look. Please remember that the A1c is an average, which means it doesn't reflect if you have many highs or many lows. For example, two people can have the exact same A1c because they have the same average, yet one of them could have steady blood sugar levels and the other could have many highs and many lows that result in the same average. This is the reason why the A1C test never replaces regular blood sugar testing at home. As you know, your blood sugar can vary and go up and down throughout your day or night as you eat, as you move, as you exercise, as you go through something stressful or as you rest. So tracking your blood sugar levels at different times of the day is important so you and your healthcare team can understand what lifestyle habits and what medication adjustments can be made to better manage your diabetes. Speaking of better management, what should your A1C target be? Your diabetes healthcare team should decide that and then inform you of your personal A1C target, because target levels should always be personalized to each and every one of you. Having a low target of less than 6 or 6.5% can lower your risk for long-term complications like kidney or eye disease, but it can also increase your risk for severe hypoglycemia, which is dangerously low blood sugar. What this means is that if you've been recently diagnosed or you don't take any medication for diabetes yet, it will probably be better to aim for a lower target because at this point your risk for hypoglycemia is usually low. However, for people with long-standing diabetes or people with a known history of hypoglycemia or people who already have advanced complications of diabetes, then in those cases it might make more sense to aim for a higher target of less than 7, 7.5 or even 8%. The point is, talk to your doctor about the ideal target for you so you know what average blood sugar levels make sense for you when you're testing at home. How often should you get an A1C test? This will depend on a few factors like whether you have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. And it will also depend on your latest A1C result, how well you manage your blood sugar and also if there's been any recent changes in your medication. Generally speaking, it should be at least once every year but it could also be every six months or even every three months if you and your doctor decide that you need a closer follow-up 
because let's say you're making changes to your treatments or you're simply making changes in your lifestyle. How do you prepare for your A1C test? The test is usually done in a doctor's office or a lab by drawing a blood sample from your arm. You don't need to do anything special to prepare for your A1C test. There are no food restrictions before going in. You can continue to take all your diabetes and other meds as usual, even on the day of the blood test. However, I would suggest that you ask your doctor if you're doing any other tests at the same time because you might need to prepare for them differently. What can affect your A1C? There are a few medical conditions that can affect your A1C and make your results less accurate. So I'm just going to list a bunch of them here so you have an idea. Pregnancy, kidney failure, liver disease or severe anemia, iron or B12 deficiency anemia, recent or heavy blood loss or blood transfusions, people with certain blood disorders like sickle cell anemia or thalassemia, certain medications like opioids and some HIV drugs, and chronic alcohol ingestion. If you fall in any of the categories I just mentioned, don't worry, your doctor will be able to run different tests to either diagnose you or monitor your diabetes. What do you do if your A1C number is high? The answer here is pretty simple. You have to take action. Of course, your doctor will probably help by making changes to your treatment, add a new medication or increase the dose of your current medication, which are all great options, but this is important. It is not enough. Taking all your meds as prescribed by your doctor is never enough. The best way to lower your A1C result is working on improving your lifestyle habits. That is always going to be needed no matter how far along your diabetes journey you are. And it's always going to be a work in progress, meaning you'll always need to be curious and check your blood sugar at home as you make little adjustments to your eating habits, your exercise habits, your sleeping habits, and your stress management. These are all the things that need to be addressed individually and that constantly need to be reevaluated as you progress in your journey. The best part is, once you start making little changes here and there in your lifestyle, you'll notice very quickly that you'll not only feel better, but also you'll notice that it'll have a great impact on your blood sugar and your A1C. A lot of times that impact can be more powerful than certain meds, so don't ever ignore your lifestyle habits. If you want more information on type 2 diabetes management and prevention, click on the link in the description box below to access the free course that I've developed with a team of healthcare professionals who are all on a mission, like me, to help people take control and defeat type 2 diabetes while taking fewer pills. Drop any other questions you may have in the comments below. I will be happy to answer you. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.